for one thing. <laughs> okay, so um, <laughs> it's WLBB thir uh, 1330, AM 1330. And, and we have Joel here who's going to make me look very, very young. And more importantly, <coughs> we have representatives from the Sons of the American Revolution and uh, the Daughters of the American Revolution. And we also have... Uh, George Washington. We're going to start with George <laughs> Washington. Uh, I mean, I know you like to be called George Wheelis when you're n not General jo Washington, but good morning. Good morning. And Alice, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? I'm so happy to see you. You guys um, freaked me out. No, you didn't freak me out, but I'm off my game. I want to tell you why, because you were so kind to give um, this station and, um, and me recognition uh, from the National Society of the Sons of the American Revolution uh, Certificate of Appreciation. Well, right back at you is what I want to say to you guys because you come to this station all the time and you remind us of our American history, of our proud heritage. You remind us that it's okay to be happy to be Americans and of the sacrifices of our forebears. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't get better than that if you ask my opinion well, we, we appreciate a, a forum or a platform that we can talk about you know the ideals and principles that we stand for in, our, in both of our organizations which are essentially the same well they are yeah. they are so um, we, we're here to talk about President's Day which was yesterday but um, <laughs> you guys <laughs> have got to go on Facebook live <laughs> honestly you're gonna love it <laughs> okay so tell us about George Washington um, I was going to call you Your Excellency, which is what they called him when he was a general, I think. Uh, if that TV show turned Washington Spies. Well, is th there were some things in that show that probably weren't really? historically Really? Okay, all right. Well, then but I'll just call you General Washington for right now. General Wheelis. General Wheelis. Uh, <laughs> and I got a, I got a promotion. Uh, obviously, the President's Day is was yesterday, but it's uh, – if, as far as the federal holidays goes, it is considered Washington's birthday. That's the name. President's Day is not an official holi federal holiday. Some states have come, and it came basically out, I guess, as a result of commercial interest in promoting. <laughs> it's another reason for sales, <laughs> For right? sales, yes. Uh -huh. Okay, so what was Washington's birthday? Uh, the, the 22nd of February. Oh. 1732. Oh, okay, so on, let's see, what's it? So my math, Thursday will be his birthday. Correct. Okay, and then, of course, um, Lincoln's birthday was also in February the 12th. The 12th. And are there any other presidents? Not in February. Okay. President's Day, uh, because it encompasses so much and it's not a, a, you know, a legal federal holiday, some states include Thomas Jefferson. Oh at the same time and then depending on the state they they throw in some others and some some statewide and is their policy or whatever they it's just to honor all presidents or the office of the president mm -hmm. of the United States as opposed to necessarily one particular or a couple of people mm -hmm. yeah and so Alice Robinson what tell us about the significance why what should we be bearing in mind in this uh, I'll say this week of president's birthdays and president's day Beyond the sales, which I don't even know if they have those anymore because I don't shop. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, I think they do have the <laughs> sales and <laughs> well, they're good sales. And okay, good. Uh, but, no, I think it really shows us the importance of the president himself, of his office. And uh, just, you know, we learn a few facts about presidents as we go along that are on television, on the radio, mm -hmm. and, and now we'll tell you a, a few of those crazy facts and some interesting facts. I would love, I would love to do that. I, I love that kind of trivia. And also, um, I've noticed that there's been a resurgence of, this is pay-per-view, this is sort of like Amazon and Netflix, there's a resurgence of historical shows, uh, historical mm -hmm. series, and they... It, it makes me really happy because it, it tells me that there's a market for, uh, I mentioned earlier, Turn, Washington Spies, mm -hmm. and then there's one about Jamestown and uh, so uh, a couple about England and sort of the, the, the conditions in England that led to the, to the migration um, and the founding of the United States. So uh, what do you think about that sort of resurgence, it seems, in popular culture of 
interest in our country and its history. Yeah. It, it, it comes and goes mm. over time uh, because even after the American Revolution, it was not too long after that a lot of things were sort of gotten in and pushed in the background and then the resurgence came again in the later in the 1800s mm -hmm. and uh, e even in Carroll County it, there's uh, if the genealogical society there quarterly there was a, an item of, uh, talking about revolution some rev the old revolutionary gentleman that sat on the stage at the platform at the on the 4th of July and it was written in the 1880s but of course those gentlemen were long gone by then and it was saying it, it back at the time that was at the time of the I guess 1830s or 40s there was a, a lack of interest in the revolution those those were no I'm sorry th there was an interest then because there was a renewed interest in the revolution but by the 1880s like he said sadly that interest in American history that part of American history had lagged some I wonder whether the Civil War really just sort of eroded that for a, a period it yeah may, it may have yeah just time and I mean it's just parts of history not just the American Revolution but parts of history sometimes they they go fade away a little bit and then sometimes they come back well okay um, so let's let's hear some more about Washington since where did you get that outfit everybody Facebook live that's the place to be right now <laughs> <laughs> WLBB 1330 uh, and you, you can see Washington living history in the broadcast bungalow uh, the, well this was this was made by a gentleman, one of our, one of our, uh, our secretary of our chapter, secretary treasurer of our chapter, and he was pre uh, principal at uh, Jones Elementary in Bremen. Uh, wow. Man on his janitorial staff had been a tailor for Sewell Manufacturing in oh. Bremen, and uh, he he made this. Uh, he made several of these for uh, people. This is a actually this is a Georgia Society S A R Color Guard uniform. It's a replica of. Uh, well, what a staff officer of Washington would have won. Washington is close to this, but his was a little fancy or ornate or whatever. And uh, that would be basically what I have on today mm -hmm. with the, the gold and all. It would be a brigadier, uh, the rank of a brigadier general. But uh, that's 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 where it came from. Would you do me a favor? I hardly ever do this on the radio, but since we're on Facebook Live, could you stand up for a second? Because I can't, <laughs> I don't remember you wearing breeches, but I think you do. I do. <laughs> so cool. I'd ask you to stand on the chair, but don't. But oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, wow. No. You know, it's a really good looking outfit. It's a good looking uniform. Yeah, it's 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 wool and it's it wasn't cheap. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, but yeah, it's uh, it's a nice looking uniform. So, tell us about Alice President's Day. Uh and we'll call this President's Week since Washington's birthday is coming up. Uh and tell us what you'd like us to be thinking, or well, let's just talk about some interesting facts about some of our presidents. We've had some scoundrels, let's yes, be honest. We have. Uh, but we've also had some, I would say, heroes. So who are your favorites? I guess my favorite, oh gosh, I'm going to start with the first one, G George Washington, then Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. Those were my two favorites. Yeah. Because I guess because I learned more about the two of them. Um, Abraham Lincoln, of course, was the the president that started out as a poor child and he schooled himself, mm -hmm. so to speak, and became just a brilliant person, which goes to show that you can rise above your ranks. Um, well, yeah, with the circumstances of your birth, you don't... Right. Yeah, you, uh, you, that was Lincoln, right? I'm sorry. That was Lincoln, so, yeah. yeah. Um, and he became a brilliant attorney, lawyer. Yes. And without having ever gone to school. Right. Back then, you didn't have to go to school to be a lawyer. Well <laughs> so, <laughs> you could just take off. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've, already, I've always loved him and the terrible decisions he had to make to keep the union together. Yes, yes. Ta talk about that a little bit. Well, first, I want to say that he was the only president unanimously elected, which meant that all of the state representatives voted for him. Wow, if I were Stephen Douglas, I would have felt really bad about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was real. That was neat, and uh, I think off the subject. Okay. But on the more interesting thing was 
about Washington's teeth. You know, so many, so many crazy stories have been about them. Mm -hmm. First, that they were wooden teeth, then they were hippopotamus teeth, and then they were teeth from somebody that lived on his plantation. So, you well, mean taken after somebody I died, think and then so. they did? Oh, yeah, and Yikes. there are many pictures of those teeth. So, we don't know. Now, uh, let's just, oh, you know what? It's time for a break. I, I forgot. We, we were, I was about to start a brand new conversation. Uh, and we will do that after we hear from Tanner Health System. When we get back, some more hard hitting questions for <laughs> George Willis and, <laughs> and Alice Robinson. And when we're talking good. about yep. this, we'll just call it President's <laughs> Week. So we'll be right back, everybody. See you in 60 seconds. At Tanner, we're advancing health throughout West Georgia and East Alabama because we know that exceptional care isn't based on how many patients we serve, but how well we serve them. That's why we're focused on quality, delivering the best possible care for our patients. It's why we're expanding our clinical services and building new facilities to serve our growing community. And it's why we're looking beyond our hospitals and medical practices to develop sustainable wellness and preventive health programs in our region. What makes a hospital great has changed. It's not how many beds we have. It's how well we care for the neighbors who need them. Delivering the right care to every patient, every time, is how Tanner is advancing health with medicine beyond measure. Learn more at Tanner.org or find a physician on our medical staff by calling 770-214-CARE. we're back. Are you back with us? I hope so. This is Lori Wilson with you on Community Voice, starting our second segment of today's show with George Wheelis or George Washington. You know, it's hard <laughs> to tell the two apart. Uh, and also Alice Robinson, sons of the American Revolution, daughters of the American Revolution. We're here to talk about President's Day. So um, let's just talk about some of the research that you've done recently, <laughs> Alice, on just fun, fun facts about our American presidents. Oh, my goodness. There are a lot of them. Some of them that are interesting that are still known today is that John Adams and Thomas Jefferson both died on July the 4th. Isn't that crazy? Yes, it is. And, um, and they hadn't been friends for very long. I mean, th it had been a long time. They had a big falling out, <laughs> and they had started to sort of, in their el elder years, uh, reconnect, correspond back and forth. But I think was it? Um, I think it was John Adams' last words were Jeff, where Jefferson lives. However, Jefferson had predeceased John Adams by a few hours. Yeah. How about right. that? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. yeah. That's what I learned by watching HBO's John Adams, oh. which is so fantastic, by the way. Which is that's what I'm talking about. This resurgence uh, of, or it seems to me, yeah. uh, of Amer of shows that are we have access to. I mean, it's not all Game of Thrones for heaven's sakes. Our own history is that is more interesting than that. Yeah, and that event brought about a resurgence in the founding fathers, and it, it's key because I I do Charles Carroll. Oh, uh huh. In the, at the you know for the fourth graders and stuff, but that's what brought prominence to Charles Carroll because when those two gentlemen died, Jefferson and Adams, he was the last surviving signer of the Declaration of Independence. We're talking about Charles, Charles Carroll, Carroll of Carrollton, the, Maryland, wasn't Mar it? Yes. Uh huh. And why? He got all kind of honors as being the last living signer, and one of those was Georgia newly created counties or territories. Carroll County was named in his honor. We've got a Carroll County, Georgia, of course, Maryland. I think there's a Kentucky and Texas. a Texas. There's about 12 or 14 cities of Carrollton, and I forget how many Carroll counties across. So he was kind of a rock star for a while because well, he was the yeah, last yeah. signer. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's interesting. Fun, fun, fun mm -hmm. fact. What else? What else you got? Okay, um... I thought this was this was sort of funny. Ronald Reagan, hmm. remember when he was shot, he joked, "I forgot to duck." Yeah, <laughs> I thought that was funny. That that was one of those silly things. You know what? He was. I just loved him I, until too. recently. He was my favorite president ever. Uh, so, I remember also, and that was what 1981. It was right after he was mm -hmm. inaugurated, I think. Right, 1881. Yeah, and um, he had. I guess he was get prepping for or going, getting ready to go into surgery, and he looked. President Reagan looked at his 
um, surgeons, and he said, I, I hope you guys aren't Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> so he was a good one. He was good. Yeah. He, I remember being a 17-year-old when he was, or 16-year-old, when he started running for the presidency. Uh, and, you know, at the time, we were just, talk about a malaise in the United States with the Iranian hostage crisis and the oil embargo and the, and the lines, uh, rationed gasoline. You remember all that? And had to keep, President uh, Carter was telling us that we needed to keep our uh, thermostats down low, you mm -hmm. know, to, so, and, and put on a couple extra sweaters. And uh, it just seemed like a, a breath of fresh air when Reagan was elected. Yes. That's how I felt. Who's your favorite president? Well, besides. Uh, well, George Washington, yeah. <laughs> I'd be, because you know, being the first and starting basically with almost like a blank sheet. Uh, I think FDR, uh, oh, Eisenhower. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you know, Eisenhower, it was under his administration that civil rights legislation first hit Congress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We the, don't the, hear about uh, that all yeah, the time. He's, criti he's criticized for not being maybe enough emphasis on civil rights. And I was listening, <laughs> I was yesterday I was looking around at these different morning shows, news shows and morning shows, and this I, I was telling Alice yesterday, I didn't know this about Eisenhower, but with the Korean War mm -hmm. being, you know, from the time, but the eight years that he was president, mm -hmm. not one single uniformed American service person was killed in 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 in, in service to the country during his eight years. Wow, and, and to say nothing of his service to the country during the correct. World War Two, but you know that notion that he didn't have enough to do with civil rights is it, that's one of those untruths that we hear yeah. over and over and over again, and then it become and all yeah. of a sudden, Lyndon Baines Johnson gets the credit for it, but under Eisenhower, yeah, it, civil rights legislation, every Republican voted for it, no Democrats voted voted for it. So uh, yeah, I think he got a bad rap. Yeah. Plus two he got he's criticized for not being uh I guess early on getting uh speaking out against Joe McCarthy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, th those were troubled times. Under what? Under whose administration were you born? I'm asking you guys to date yourself. Hope you don't mind. Harry Truman. Harry Truman? Yeah, I was born in 47. What do you think about it, what it must have taken to decide to go ahead and launch? What is it, Fat Boy and Little? What was it? Fat Man and Little Boy, or what were they called? Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look it up. Uh, we're talking about the two nuclear yeah. bombs. My father always said that it, he thinks that it probably saved 100,000 American lives. What, what are your thoughts? Well, it, it saved a lot. Uh, uh, some of the people I know, one of, men, one of the men in our chapter was uh, airborne. And uh, he didn't get into the fight so much in Europe because by the time he got there, it, you know, it was pretty much over yeah. in Europe. And they, was, they were staging to go to Japan. And he, he says in some of those, uh, you know, it was probably at least a million American lives were saved. Uh, mm -hmm. As a result of that, because the, the Japanese were already look at some of the old things. I mean, they, men, women, even little children were armed with mm -hmm. pointed sticks and all kinds of things. If if the if the American or allies came came aboard, I mean, I'm not aboard, but no, but if they Japan. had invaded, well, and, and I know all this because we recently, my my beloved and I went to New Orleans and visited the World War II museum and l learned so much. But one of the things that relates to what you're saying, George, is that. Uh, the Japanese believed that they were fighting for God. They were fighting for their emperor who was divine. Yep. And the emperor said, we will all die together and it will be glorious, right? To yep. give your life for the emperor. And that's the kind of religious devotion that they had, which mm. is really sad when you think about it. Because, I mean, uh, yeah, there's some really awful stories to tell about that. So Truman really had to take a terrible decision didn't yeah. he? Yeah. yeah so I, c I can see why he's one of your favorites. How, uh, we have 10 minutes left. I wonder, Alice, should I wait and ask you after the next break? To okay, great. we'll do that because uh, we do want to hear from our sponsor, Tanner Health System. It brings us community voice every morning. And we'll see you guys right back here on Facebook Live, no less, in 60 seconds. Stick around. At Tanner, we're advancing health throughout West Georgia and East Alabama. 
because we know that exceptional care isn't based on how many patients we serve, but how well we serve them. That's why we're focused on quality, delivering the best possible care for our patients. It's why we're expanding our clinical services and building new facilities to serve our growing community. And it's why we're looking beyond our hospitals and medical practices to develop sustainable wellness and preventive health programs in our region. What makes a hospital great has changed. It's not how many beds we have. It's how well we care for the neighbors who need them. Delivering the right care to every patient, every time, is how Tanner is advancing health with medicine beyond measure. Learn more at Tanner.org or find a physician on our medical staff by calling 770-214-CARE. And we're going to jump right back in our, when, uh, no, it's our Tuesday uh, edition of Community Voice. Lori Wilson, I'm a little choked up here because um, George, Wolf, uh, George Washington is in the broadcast bungalow. <laughs> <laughs> As you will see, if you are watching us on Facebook Live, we're talking about President's Day, and we're just, we've just gone ahead and uh, pronounced it President's Week because uh, George Washington's birthday is coming up uh, on Wednesday, uh, Thursday. Uh, Alice? You were going to talk about Mount Rushmore a little bit. What you got there? Oh, I've got the president on here, and can you see the picture? Mm -hmm. Can you see the picture? Let's hold it up. Okay. Where, Joel, which camera should I hold this up? This one in front of me? A little, a little behind the scenes action here. How's that? Yeah, uh, that was my internet <laughs> <You like that>? <laughs> contribution. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we like visuals. Okay. Yes. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Of course, my favorite, <coughs> Abraham Lincoln was on there I, I have a fun a little funny of course that's a that's part I like are the little crazies but I had a student that couldn't say Abraham Lincoln she called him Hamaham Lincoln oh that was Hamaham Lincoln Hamaham. that's kind of sweet yeah I never see his name unless I think about her um well of course he my favorite Abraham was on there and who was 16th president mm -hmm. and led the country through the civil war and ended up you know, almost everybody's favorite and hero. Mm -hmm. um, well, for, you know, freeing the slaves was huge. Was Emancipation huge. Proclamation. Yes, yes. Yeah. And uh, Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, Hamilton. I, I mean, we have the goodies up here. Well, it's, it's uh, Washington, Lincoln, uh, Jefferson, and for some reason, That's Teddy, uh, Teddy uh, Roosevelt. Roosevelt. <laughs> yeah. I went black. I was going to call him Truman, but no, Roosevelt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think Truman had such a glorious mustache. <laughs> no, I was just thinking about that when you said when, uh, when uh, uh, who was president on your birthday. <laughs> so that stuck in my mind. Right, okay. Uh, so have you ever been to Mount Rushmore? It's pretty, no, it's pretty amazing. I have not. It is, it's amazing. Um, okay, so you were talking about earlier, George, about George Washington's farewell address. Right. Yeah, I didn't realize. I mean, I've read his address and over over time a good many times, which is a little, little lengthy. But uh, I didn't know each year. I guess it came apart about the honor of Washington's birthday, but uh, on his birthday every year, the, the his farewell address is read in the United States Senate. When did that start? Right after his administration? No, uh, I have it here somewhere. And it, that really didn't start till into the 1800s. Well, see. I know. I remember that he warned against factions. He uh, and foreign alliances talked about the yeah and foreign alliances. Uh, he talked t about the excellence of the Constitution having implemented systems of checks and balance, balances and separation of powers. And, you know, those are words that might make your brain kind of get, start freezing over or whatever because they're not exactly exciting, sexy terms. But separation of powers, we're, we're really having a problem with that today. I mean, if you just look at the news to the extent that you can trust anything that they tell us, um, w we've, we've had this problem with power with each each entity in our government overreaching uh, their particular uh, function in, in the, um, the the government and therefore 
we I've heard a lot of times in the last little while, uh, last couple of years, that we are heading for a constitutional crisis. So I often wonder what George Washington might think about that. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I know you know with the with the partisanship, I know that would not be, and that's one of the things he warned about in his in his address. But uh, as far as the between the legislative and the executive branches, they've been struggling against each other for a long time, probably since uh, FDR, if not before. Yeah. Government grew enormously under Woodrow Wilson and FDR. A lot of unelected uh, sort of bureaucrats and, and agencies. The Maybe you guys can comment on this. This is w one of the statements that Washington included in his farewell address. He said, he said, let it simply be asked, where is the security for property, for reputation, for life, if the sense of religious obligation deserts the oath, which are the instruments of investigation in the courts of justice? And let us, with caution, indulge the supposition that morality can be maintained without religion. He was a very religious man. And those who say that, that the Founding Fathers tried to make this an irreligious country, I think, are absolutely wrong. Wow. What are your thoughts about That's that? Correct. General Washington? Well, I, I don't know about all of them, but they were not, they were deist. Mm -hmm. A lot of them not, were. Not necessarily Christian. Mm -hmm. But they did conceive of a, a greater power. A, a creator. To, yeah. And that's what Jefferson referred to. Yeah. Him, you know, as the creator. Uh, Franklin was pretty much in the same. Washington was. And, uh, you know, and Jefferson, you know, the, before the revolution, he wrote the, the, you know, the Virginia Resolution on religious freedom. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so you don't have to be a religious zealot to, uh, to appreciate the role of this n notion of a higher power from whom we de derive our rights, you know, is just fundamental to the founding of this country. So that seems to be another thing that we should be keeping in mind during this week uh, when we're thinking about our president. We have two minutes left. Alice? Take one of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think that this gives us a chance to reflect on our presidents, good and bad. It gives us a, ch a chance to think back on our country, its, its history, its, its start, and the, the roles these men have played in our, in mm -hmm. our history, in our country. Mm -hmm. And uh, George, or General, uh, Your Excellency? <laughs> <laughs> he well, doesn't like it when I call him Your Excellency because George Washington yeah. didn't like that either. But uh, no, I would think that I even though you know you can look at some of these, even the least popular, uh, but pretty much most of them, even they were did bad things. That there were some good that mm -hmm. that uh, you know some of them did. I mean, you criticize Nixon or Watergate stuff like that, but you go to some of the things that Nixon helped you know do. Mm -hmm. Uh, just at him in particular, but you know, there's, there's good and bad in all of them. Yeah, and they're presidents and they're human. Yeah. yeah. So I guess thinking about the presidency is is a good is a good idea for today. And let's be thinking about the presidency and and stay engaged. So thank you, Alice mm -hmm. Robinson. Thank you so much for being here, George Willis. Thank you very That's much, fine. everybody. Thank you for joining us on Facebook Live. I'll see you tomorrow, twenty one, twenty three and a half hours. <laughs>